channel. I'm Alice. Last time we were talking about indices. Today we're going to talk a bit more about the FTSE 100. So as you may well know, the FTSE 100 index is the UK's most widely known stock market index. It's comprised of the top 100 publicly listed companies, otherwise known as blue chip companies, as ranked by market capitalisation. So FTSE stands for Financial Times Stock Exchange, FTSE, and it can be referred to as the FTSE 100, the FTSE 100 Index, FTSE, or most informally and perhaps most commonly, the FTSE. So think of it as a summary of more of its constituent parts, a list of the 100 top publicly trading companies on the London Stock Exchange. The index is not an even split though, in that the larger companies represent a larger portion of the FTSE 100. So the bigger listed companies obviously make more of a difference to the index than the smaller listed companies. In fact, the top 10 listed companies represent 47% of the FTSE 100 value. And as such, the value of the FTSE 100 index can go up and down dependent on the value of its shares. There are four sectors that have a weighting of over 10% on the FTSE 100 index. We've talked about them in a previous video, but just in case you need reminding, those four sectors are firstly, oil and gas. Think BP and Dutch Shell Company. Secondly, banks, HSBC, Lloyds, the Royal Bank of Scotland. Thirdly, household and personal goods, brands like Burberry or Imperial Brands. And lastly, healthcare. Those are the four sectors that have a weighting of more than 10% on the FTSE 100 index. The FTSE 100 name originates from when it was first owned 50-50 by the Financial Times and the London Stock Exchange. Hence the name FTSE, Financial Times, Stock Exchange, put them together, you get FTSE. And the fact that it was listing 100 companies. And when it was first launched on the 3rd of January 1984, the value was 1,000. And obviously since then, the makeup of the index has changed enormously. The FTSE 100 is now maintained by the FTSE Group, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of the London Stock Exchange. Now, although the FTSE 100 is the most well-known index that the group produces, the FTSE Group also calculates for 100,000 other indices, covering markets across the world every day. In the UK market, the other FTSE indices include the FTSE 250, the 250 largest companies after the FTSE 100, and the FTSE small cap, those companies that are smaller than those listed. The FTSE 100 and the FTSE 250 together make the FTSE 350. Add in the FTSE small cap and you get the FTSE all share. Now the majority of revenue from FTSE 100 companies actually comes from abroad, 75% in fact. So the performance of the FTSE 100 reflects the global economy more than the UK economy in which these companies are listed. Now, as such, traders see the FTSE 100 as more of a barometer for global economy. The capitalisation weighted index that consists the largest 250 companies listed on the London Stock Exchange can, of course, be found on the FTSE 250 list. Constituents of the FTSE 100 are decided on a quarterly basis, usually in March, June, September and December. Now, during this process, the market capitalisation of the companies is determined and it's decided whether or not they will be listed on the index. As the fortunes of the companies within the FTSE 100 rise and fall, some companies will leave the FTSE 100 index, allowing others to join. So as such, promotions and demotions will occur, whereby some companies that are listed on the bottom of the FTSE 100 index may fall into the FTSE 250 and vice versa. It's worth noting the FTSE 250 has a greater portion of its revenue derived from the UK, so is generally deemed as a greater representation of the fate of the UK economy. So three main things drive the FTSE 100. The first being currency, particularly as such a large proportion of the index is made of international companies, the movement of currency is a huge factor. The second being energy and metal prices. So dominance from resource companies means commodity market movements have a material impact. And thirdly, 
results. So strong or weak results from some of the largest constituents of the FTSE 100 like HSBC, like Royal Dutch Shell, like GlaxoSmithKline, those can have an effect on the entire index moving it higher or lower. So as I mentioned earlier, the FTSE 100 can be seen as a summary of its constituent parts of the 100 largest companies publicly trading on the London Stock Exchange. Now, because they're traded on a London market, of course, they're going to report their profits in sterling. However, as we said earlier, 70 to 75 percent of companies listed on the FTSE 100 derive their profits from overseas internationally. Now, a devalued sterling for every dollar will bring in less sterling and conversely, a devalued sterling for every pound will bring in more dollar. So as the pound falls in value, those international operations will gain in value and vice versa. Should the pound strengthen, those international operations will lose value. So are there any benefits if a company's share values are placed in the FTSE? Well, there will be many more institutional investors holding this stock due to their investment mandate, like a FTSE index fund will now have to hold the stock. And past research has shown that the stock price will increase by about 5% permanently due to buying pressure. And furthermore, there'll be higher investor awareness and this can also bring in new investors. So how to trade on the FTSE 100? Well, like any stock index, it cannot be bought and sold like an equity. Instead, you can trade the FTSE 100 index today using CFDs, futures, spread bets, or an exchange traded fund product. It's sometimes referred to as the UK 100 by spread betting companies or CFD trading companies. And trading the FTSE using CFD spread bets allows you to take a long or short position on the index. So as one would expect, the FTSE 100 is one of the most popular traded indices in the UK, not least because most spread bettors and CFD traders are based in the United Kingdom and are more likely to be familiar with this benchmark than other markets due to the fact that it's usually in local headlines. A one pound bet stake on the FTSE 100 would translate into an effective exposure of £6,700 with the FTSE at £6,700. So when can you trade on the FTSE 100? Well, the index opens at 8 a.m. UK time and closes at 4.30 p.m. Now, some market makers will continue to quote prices on this index, both in advance of the opening time and after the closing hours, as there are some futures contracts available to trade outside normal trading hours. The FTSE is most liquid during those market hours of 8 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. when the London Stock Exchange is open. And the FTSE future generally takes its pricing from the underlying index during the day and the futures outside of market hours. It's also affected by the Asia market as a lead indicator and tends to follow the US markets when they open around 2.30 a.m. London time. So I hope that's given you a little more insight into the FTSE 100. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and we will see you again soon.